Welcome to Wear and Tear. Today, yet another nerdy topic. High power multi emitter LED lights and runtime testing. How exciting! We have the Jaxman E2L, a very compact triple XPG G2 light, which I used as a video lamp for quite a while, and it is pretty much in the neutral white department at home. A superb 900 lumens light with an old fashioned user interface that knows no mode memory but also knows zero complications. Next we have the Quad Emitter Astrolux S41 with Cree XPG 3s representing a more cold white light. It is super compact but also heavy because of the copper heatsink. It has a very clever user interface and compared to the newer more powerful versions of this light it is blessed with a tail switch. It is rated at 1600 lumens, which it delivers for a few minutes at most before stepping down. Last but not least, we have the Kittleker E6 featuring a triple luminous SST 20P60 drop in, emitting the warmest light one could ever wish for. It is rated at 1000 lumens. In my last video, which was a test of the Kittleker E6, I had more extensive outdoor footage of all those lights. It was done in rainy, foggy weather with a lot of moisture in the air and in the forest. The subjective impression was that the warm white light of the A6 was far superior to the other lights which, indoors, seemed to be brighter. It just showed more details and had a better range and lit up the forest way better. However, I found that it did not benefit from a second 18650 cell, so I decided to do some more runtime testing and compare it to other lights. Generally speaking, such multi emitter lights are interesting if you look for more floody lights and a great quality in terms of beam pattern and light color. Instead of pushing a single emitter to the limit, they drive more LEDs to a more reasonable degree, which can also be a bit weaker types of LED but with interesting properties regarding color rendition. Still, they deliver the same or superior amounts of light often put through optics, further enhancing the quality of the beam. This way you get a light source producing even light distribution with no tunnel effects or situations where you blind yourself. You will see much more details and come closer to a daylight quality of light. So compared to your average flashlight, they are more specialized, but often it pays off to have a more specialized tool at hand. Try walking through difficult terrain with a multi-emitter light or a traditional throwy reflector light. The multi-emitter light might just save you a hospital visit. As regarding the run times, all of the lights are powered by unprotected Panasonic 18650B cells with 3400 milliamp hours. Top left is the E6 with a single cell, top right the E6 with two 18650s. Why the light color seems to be different in both shots is not clear to me. Maybe because of the difference in external light regarding the time of day, but I'm not sure. Bottom left we have the Astrolux S41 and bottom right the Jaxman E2L. The single cell setups are all in shallow water, simulating the heat sinking that otherwise is done by the operator's hand, that would be your hand. The first one to give out is the Jaxman at 1 hour and 33 minutes. However, it loses hardly any brightness over the runtime and starts the battery warning at 3.18 volts, which is in favor of protecting your cell. After that you would still have choose for the lower settings and maybe find your way home. Just maybe. The Astrolux gives you a very bright start but dims notably before it starts giving you warnings after 2 hours, with the cell being at 2.94 volts. The E6 with 2 cells gives up at 2.9 volts after 2 hours and 30 minutes with noticeable dimming over the last half an hour. The E6 with one cell is the winner, giving out at 2.9 volts after 3 hours and 10 minutes with visible dimming over the last 45 minutes or so. So the triple SST20 setup in warm white built into a P60 drop-in gives you the longest run times. 
All of the lights are thermally regulated, so they dim before overheating. While the single A6 seems to perform better than the dual cell E6 is a question I need to ask the manufacturer. Maybe the dual cell setup gives more light on a constant basis for a shorter time span. Maybe it just blows the energy out in the form of heat. So far I see no advantage of running the light with two 18650s with the extension for the battery tube. In my opinion, you fare better changing the cell after the first one is exhausted. For outdoor especially, when there is stuff in the air, some moisture or so, I would prefer the E6 as it produces the most pleasant light and outlasts the other lights. Build quality is great with all three lights. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like multi-emitter lights or at least got interested in one. If you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, I will make money from these videos in about 100 years mathematically speaking. So it really would make sense if you liked, subscribed and hit the notification bell. Or rather, share your expertise on the topic in the comment section. Thank you for watching.